Now that we have all the systems installed and configured, let's do one last step to secure our host system. So PFSense, which is acting as a router firewall, has two interfaces as we saw before. One is the external interface, which is here, and one is the internal virtual switch, which is here. All the internal lab systems are connected to the private switch. Since it is private, the host systems will not be able to flow any traffic from here to here. In other words, uh, if a, there is a port open in any of the systems, the host system cannot reach this. On the other way, if an internal lab system is trying to reach the Windows 10 system, uh, it will be able to see it because uh, there is no rule protecting that. So this is an internal interface and this is an external interface and we don't have any rules stopping the internal traffic going from here to here. Sometimes the host firewall may block you from doing something, but it is not a good security practice just to rely on the host firewall. So it is better to add one additional layer of defense and configure that at the PFSense level. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So if you go to command prompt and um, if I type in the IP address, the IP, for IP address for the host system is 10.0.1.13 and the host name is Jarvis, which is our host system. And uh, let's try to find one system in the lab. This is our Windows, uh, Windows 7 client system and it is using the IP 192.168.1.2.10. So let's try to ping this Windows 7 system from the host system. If our theory is right, we shouldn't be able to ping it. Right? Even if there's any ports, we won't be able to see it because uh, the, this way the traffic is blocked. And let's keep a note of this IP address 10.0.1.13. So let's go to the Windows 7 box from inside the lab and we'll try to ping it. So like as you see here, uh, we are able to ping it and also if there is a malware and if there is an exploit on the host system, it is possible for those uh, viruses or malware to exploit our host system. Now let's see how to stop this using PFSense. So let's go to the um, administrative console of PFSense. So you should be able to reach PFSense console from any of the lab systems because they are all in the same network. So you have to go to 192.168.1.1 So I had to download um, Chrome uh, for some reason um, IE doesn't work and I don't know why. So anyway, when you go to Chrome, uh, it's the same IP address and you can go to advance and you can proceed. And the password uh, username is uh, admin and the default password was pfsense uh, but uh, you should have changed it um, during uh, the initial setup and uh, okay i do remember my password so once you log on this is what you're going to see and uh, you're, you have to the wan interface which is the external and then the lan is the the internal inter interface so now let's go to firewall and you can go to rules So once you're in the rules, um, there are WAN and LAN. Uh, so you're not trying to change anything on the WAN side, which is the wide area network. So click on the uh, LAN tab. And we are trying to add a rule. So let's go and add a rule. So we, the action, I mean, this is how you would create a rule, a firewall rule in any um, firewall. So with um, Cisco Juniper, it'll be more of a command line, uh, but they do have um, a web interface like this. 
So we are trying to block some traffic originating from the internal network. So let's say block. You can also reject, but block is more um, more safe. And the interface we're looking is LAN. And uh, for now, let's stick with IPv4. And for protocol, let's say any protocol. So we want to block any any traffic that's coming from inside to outside. So source can be any because any traffic from the internal shouldn't be able to go outside. And uh, destination is something that is important. So you can say something like um, a network or you can also say single IP if you want to block a single IP. Uh, but network will be more pertinent in this thing. And you have to do the 10, 0, 1, 0. And you have to do slash 24. So we are saying any traffic originating from the LAN interface, please block going to this particular traffic, right? If you want, you can log the packets and you can see what is going on. And you can save it. And after saving, uh, it should show up here. Uh, this is the rule and the X signifies it is a block traffic and you can click apply. So you may have to wait for a couple of seconds to, for it to re reload and it is reloading and uh, most of the time it's pretty quick. So let's give it a shot. So previously we were able to ping the um, host system. I'm sorry. the um, the host system from here. So let's try that again. So now the internal lab system is not able to reach our host systems. So this is um, as safe as it gets. And uh, you can pretty much do all your research on your internal lab system. So we, we just uh, scratched the surface on PFSense. If you are interested in learning about PFSense and all the features, let me know and um, I can create a, a short course on um, how to set it up. We already saw how to set it up, uh, but we can, uh, we can see how to set up an IDS. Um, there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, there is something like a packet manager. You can install like Splunk and uh, IDS Bro and uh, we can do a lot of cool things with PFSense. So anyway, this is uh, beyond the scope for this course, uh, but that is something I would strongly recommend for you to go and learn by yourself. Or if you need some help from me, let me know and I can try to um, put something together. So let's um, um, do some final prep work and uh, we will learn something about GPO policies. So we will, know, we will learn how to push GPOs from the domain controller to the other systems in the network.